All right, folks, let's keep talking about Firebase database. And last lesson, we already showed you how you write the data to the Firebase database. Basically, if you look at the uh, database right here, I got a two little folders, and it's also part of the key. You call it the folder or key, um, but it's kind of a similar concept. So I create a friends list, and then student list, every list item has the ID here, which is also part of the key. So you can always adjust this folder name or key name and then to save your data into different locations. So that's how you write the data, pretty simple. Just a very quick recap, you actually call the Firebase database instance reference, specify the path, and then set the data you want to put. You can put a, like a, a dictionary like this, or you can just do a very simple one value that also works, depending on what you're trying to do. All right, so this lesson, we're gonna focus on how do we read the data from Firebase database. Now back to this example. Now we have already added the students and they form a list. Now what if I wanna go back to the screen here to show those students from my database in this list. And right now, this, this view here, just a basic uh, hard-coded value, just like this. And then how can I turn that into something that's um, uh, from the database, right? So let's actually do that. So coming back to the list of view demo right here, okay? So I'm gonna modify a few things here first. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna clear my, my code, right? So uh, I showed you different approaches for lists and the constructors, all of this, okay? So uh, I will create, uh, you know, let, let's do this. I'm gonna kind of copy and uh, generate another copy of the page. So this one will leave you for your reference. I will put this into the GitHub repo. So I'm gonna copy and paste this file. I'll do another one. I'll call it list view. I'll call it Firebase demo. All right, to separate them. So this one here, you can still use that as a reference. And then the other one, I will use this one as a Firebase demo, Firebase. So I can clear up a lot of the code, change this one here. And then this one is the Firebase. All right. And then with that, I'm gonna clean all of the code. I'll just keep this one here. And I don't have any <coughs> data yet, so I'm gonna keep it very empty. And I don't need to use the uh, objects, just use the basic things here. I'll just leave the constructor right here, but uh, delete all the other instrumentation code. And then right here, um, I don't need this. Just get a very clean code base right here. Okay, it's called a list of you Firebase demo page. And then I want to trigger that through the login screen. So I'm going to go back to the login screen. I want to run this one. I will need to modify this one here from a list of view demo page to list of view Firebase demo page. And then I need to import it. Just click on the button to import this library. Okay, so let me rerun my app. Uh, start over from the login screen. All right, right here. Um, this is a, just a sample demo. All right, right here. I will type my username, user2 at gmail.com and then password one two three four five six and after that i click on login all right so that brings me to this new list of view uh, demo page right now the reason I have anything nothing to show is because my list here is empty so what i'm trying to do now is to load everything from database and then show that from this um list view all right so one good way we can do is to, to, to do that in the constructor, right? So right here, I'm gonna load all the friends from Firebase database, all right? And display them in the list of you. Now, this way, this display them in the list of you, pretty simple because we already showed you that the list of you has been banded with this, this uh, friend list um, object right here. So as long as you fill in the right content, it's gonna show it up. Now the quick main question is how do we load things from Firebase? That's something we're gonna to focus today. So let's start with the code. All right, so we do Firebase database dot instance dot reference. This is the same thing. And then you still need to do this thing called a child because you wanna specify the path. Since you wanna load the data, where you wanna load the data? All right, so where's the data? So coming back here, my data is all under this friends and there's some IDs here and different things, right? So I'm gonna try different examples to show you what you can get, all right? So for example, I'm gonna do something called friends, all right? So basically means I wanna load everything under this friends folder. You can consider that a folder, all right? 
So that's how you want to load it. And then once you specify the path, okay, previously when we write it, we call something called a set, and now we will call something called dot once. All right, so that's going to trigger the loading process. So load everything and return it back to you. Now, this one still gave you a, uh, a future. So if you look at the documentation, still the future, and it gave you something called a data snapshot. All right, so that means you can do something called dot then. All right, and you can return and get the return. You'll get something called a catch error. Same thing. Whenever you're dealing with a Firebase, if it's a future, if this asynchronized call, you can just do something like this. Okay, I'm gonna clean the indentation. All right. So this is how it works. All right. So you specify the path, and then you call this function called once. It's gonna trigger the reading process. It's gonna load everything for you, and that's how it works. All right. So with this value, and that's where your data is. So I'm gonna print something called successfully loaded the data. And then let's also print what the value is. All right, so that is the result. So to help you understand, I'm gonna change the name into the data snapshot because that's what they use, okay? It's just a name so that you can understand what's going on here, all right? If something's not happening right, so print failed to load the data. All right, so I can also print the error. All right, so this function will be triggered in the constructor. Okay, so let's try this. So I'm gonna rerun this one. But remember, if this is a constructor code, it's not gonna be executed in the hot load if you are staying in the same screen. So you have to come back, log in again. All right, so log in successfully. And then right here, as you can see, um, it will, oh, actually, uh, uh, the, the constructor name was wrong, so I actually have to update it, so it was not executed. So let's run this again, and then go back, try one more time, log in. All right, so now successfully loaded the data. All right, so we print the instance of a data snapshot. So what is data snapshot? Let's actually do this. So this snapshot, you can actually do dot key or dot value because I already explained all the Firebase database records are key value pairs. Okay, let's see what the key is and also what the value is. All right, so I'm gonna print with more information here so that you can understand it. This is the key and this is the value. All right, so refresh, go back, log in. All right, so here's the key key is called friend. Here's a value, and the value has quite a lot of things. All right, so if you look at the database, it's pretty easy to understand. If you're trying to load things at this pass, now your key is basically all the way to this pass, friend. And then everything under the friend will be your value. That's why it actually returns all the student record, like the, the student ID, all the attribute right here, student ID, all the, all the attribute here. So everything under here. So that's how the Firebase read works. So you specify a pass and then the pass become the key. Everything under it will become the value. So let's try another one. So what if I want to do like student 004? So let me try this. So I'm going to change this one into friends slash stu004. Refresh my code. Go back to the code here. I'm going to go back and then try to start the screen one more time. All right, this time the key is student 004. The value is only one record because you are allocating, you're locating the specific record right here and then that becomes the key. So everything under will become the value. So that's why you only see one student record. And what if I try one more, I do a phone, right? So I do a slash phone. All right, refresh the code, try it, go back to the screen and start over again. This time the value is just the phone number because you are locating at that position. So that is the key. The value will be the phone number. So this one showed you uh, just whatever you like to read, uh, you specify the right pass, and then that will determine the key. Everything under that key will be returned as a value. So the value here is really important, okay? So once you understand this, what I want to do now is I want to actually get all the students here so that I can put them into the list, right? So. In order to do that, I'm gonna delete this one, 
I'll just call it friends. All right, so run this one more time. Go back here, start, start over again. This time it's going to give me all the student records here. All right, so all we need to do is to turn this information and put them into a friend list. I think everything will work. But there is a little bit tricky um, than we saw here, which is this part here for the value. Okay, so we need to look at what's the data structure. They actually use the curly bracket. Okay, so that actually means this is not a list. So be careful. Even though this one here looks like it's a list, multiple records, but the code here we received is actually a hash table. It's a map, not a list. So that's why you cannot directly put this thing value to this friend list. All right. And also the, another reason it's, lit, it's a lit, uh, dictionary or hash map is because there's an ID key here and then this one is the student record. So they basically return you exactly the same thing. Uh, key, value, key, value, key, value. So this one also is a, is a hash table. So what we want to do now is to iterate this map and then grab all of this record one by one, like this one, like this one here, all this one by one, and then put them into a list just like this. And if we can do that, and we'll be able to show all the content into the friend list. Okay, let's try that. So first of all, we need to know how to iterate the uh, dictionary or hash map in, uh, in Dart. So I think you can do something like this. So this is actually the map we're seeing here, the whole map. And you can do something called for each, all right? The for each would take a little option called a key and value pair, and then you do a function just like this. So this is a simple way to loop and iterate every single record in the map and then print the key and value because this one is another uh, hash table. So let me prove that. So print the key, print, the value so that you can see clearly what the data is. Okay, I'm going to rerun this. All right, I'm going to add one more message so that we can know what we're trying to do here. Iterating the value map. All right, so try this one more time. Go back, log in, start the screen. All right, so let's actually see this one more time. This is actually the initial big chunk of value we receive at the big map, and we started iterating the map. While we're iterating it, we're going to get the key value and another key, another value, another key, another value, another key, another value. As you can see, this time all the student records, the friend records had been separated from this value. Now what I can do now is I can just save everything into a list, right? So I can just create a list right here. I'll just call it friend uh, temporary list, okay? So that is a list. And as I'm iterating this one, I can just add everything to here. So because this is actually the record we shows right here. So after this, actually, let's actually verify it. So we'll see the final friend list, which is the friend temporary list. All right, so I, I give you a lot of print statements so that you can see the whole process. Okay, so rerun this, go back. Log in. All right, so we iterating everything, we're adding things to the temporary list, and eventually this time you got a list. So this is the perfect list we're looking for, right? So you got a brackets, that's a list, and then every record has all the attributes, name, phone, type, and all of this, all right? So now once you got this list, now what we can do is to update our friend list, right? So we call it friend list, will be friend temporary list. And we're finishing. All right, let's try it. Um, so this one, let's try it. There might be breaking because we are uh, missing some of the information. Let's try this. I'm gonna log in. All right. So we are starting this um, uh, new screen, and then we are updating the friend list. But it looks like we're not really seeing any of the content shows up here. All right. So we are changing the friend list. As you can see, the friend list correctly. We're also assigning that to a friend list right here. And then this one has been bonded to the list of view. But it looks like we're not really showing anything, all right? So if you are remembering something we talked recently about data bonding UI update, whenever you are changing the state, you have to notify everyone, 
all right you know notify people that this one has been updated so you do that by doing something called like set state that's it all right so i'm going to refresh this one more time and see if that actually works it's already working so i go back try this one more time login all right so that actually shows the content from the firebase database table all right there are some errors because we don't have all the urls for all the images all right so that's something we got to fix because only one of them have image url and and i think it's called image so it's not image url so i'm gonna change this one also here so let's try this one more time i'm gonna refresh all right go back login all right so this one when you have it it actually goes and shows it right and then others we don't have it then you, you don't you don't have that one so that's why it's component the image url is now all right so let's actually uh clean this one and do this again all right so go back to the firebase let me delete all the friends let's see what happens i'm going to delete all the friends right here okay okay so now i'm going to go back and then log in nothing happens and then we can start to add uh, some new friends here okay i'm going to do a john and the phone number one two three the type is work Add a friend. Let's see, make sure everything has been added. I think it's added. Verify it from here. Always verify it from your uh, backend. Okay. So then we can do more things. <clears throat> I will do a Ben 999. And now we'll do 777. This one will be Carson. This one will be, next one will be Sam. phone and then we can do uh, you know, uh, add. all right so we've added a bunch of friends let's just do one more uh, let's do Joe and all right so here we go so we got a bunch of friends let's actually come back all right so restart this screen here click on login now you can see all the friends information has been loaded from Firebase. Okay, it's so coming from exactly the same piece of data we're showing here because we're loading them first and we turn them into a list and we update the UI. All right, so that's how this one works. Okay, um, so uh, this is just a quick example on how you are actually loading the things from Firebase. Uh, the reason I show all these print statements is actually to let you see the data structure being returned here because this one is not well documented. This one actually is just a hash table where you can get a key and value. And for the value, it's another hash table depending on what you're trying to do. So you might need to iterate that one to grab all the record here and add it to the list. And then eventually you update the list with uh, this you just get, right? So this is how you read data. Now I'm showing this one is a very complicated example where you are getting a list of objects and then you're iterating them and forming another list. But if you're just reading something very simple, one value, um, then that's actually pretty straightforward. All right, so that's uh, how this one works.